Welcome to another episode of Game Time. This week we headed for the hills. We are in Los Alamos with the Los Alamos Hilltoppers and the cross country team. And with me right now, head coach Kathy Hipwood. Thanks for joining us. Of course, thank you. Is the best way to describe this year's team stacked, loaded? You have a deep, deep squad with a lot of talent. How would you describe them? Um, I would agree it's yeah. a deep squad with a lot of talent, but it's it's kind of it built off of last year and sticking together through co through COVID, which I think some teams didn't have, and I think that's what benefited it. But um, a lot of hard workers too. You're off to a great start at the Cleveland Invitational recently. You your girls team finished first as a group with four of the top ten runners in the girls varsity division. Is that kind of an accurate representation of maybe what we'll see going on the rest of the year? I, th I think overall it's kind of early to, to say, but we do have a solid group and some that can fill in for each other if somebody's off on a given day, which is something we have talked about. Um, I think what can really happen remains to be seen. And not everybody was on last week, but others really stepped up. So it's gonna vary and it's exciting. What goes into building a good cross country program? Uh, oh, there's a lot of factors, but I think the the biggest factor is just the culture and having it be a place where, where kids want to be and they're the draw for each other. I, I really believe that. Um, and just success breeds success. So once some people get a taste of it and and it just kind of becomes a certain mindset that, that that's what the people there are doing. So How much does it help training in a higher elevation, running these hills? The girls might not like it at times, but how much does it help? <laughs> Um, honestly, we get that asset so much. There's pros and cons. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It would be nice, actually, if we could do a little bit of going lower to train. But You mentioned COVID earlier. Mm -hmm. How difficult was it last year running in masks? And it yet was, they were still very successful. It was rough. Mm -hmm. um, they were amazing. They really took the challenge, and we really tried to adapt to it. And... and I don't know, just plugged away at it. It was slow at first, but it, I think planning to race a 5K in a mask is extremely intimidating and they were amazing. They just, they bit it off and, and did the best they could. Here at Los Alamos High School, the boys and girls track teams both won state championships back in June, due in large part to the runners. In fact, it wasn't even close. Did that large margin surprise you? Um, to the degree of it, yes, but we did know going in that the, it was it was such a stacked team and so many girls um, on all sides, you know, of, of the pieces of track and field that just stuck with it. So I think we were really confident going in. Coach Martinez is a great coach and really pulled it together. And yeah, they they worked hard through the whole thing. and pulled it off your group your cross-country group will travel to alamosa for a meet how does this squad fare against out-of-state competition you know that's something again that kind of remains to be seen this is um this is definitely a really really solid team and we're excited to see what they can do in the region we don't exactly know which teams from colorado from the denver area which and maybe durango the one durango was there when we went before but um we definitely want to go and, and compete and, and be up there, but how high up there that really throughout the season, we'll, we'll see the answer to that. What do you expect from these girls this year? What are the expectations and what are you expecting come state uh, again this season? Certainly a state championship is, is always a goal when, when you have a team like this. Um, but we'd really try to take it one step at a time and just a goal is for them to have the mindset to continue to improve each week and hopefully run their very best at, at the end and when it matters the most to them. All right, well, taking it one step at a time is good advice for any runner, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Good luck the uh, rest of the season. Good luck, ladies. Thanks for being our guests this week. We'll be back with more game time after this. The New Mexico Activities Association is excited to announce the NMAA 24-7 mobile app. Whether you're a student, coach, parent, or player, you can have the power of the NMAA right in the palm of your hand. Find scores and schedules, follow your favorite teams, receive special offers from NMAA sponsors, get state championship information, highlights, features, and much more. 
Download the free NMAA 24-7 mobile app in the App Store or Google Play. Get it now. I'm Kamaya Ronning from Los Alamos High School and you're watching Game Time. We started this week's show talking about cross country. Let's change gears to football for a moment. Here's a wrap up of some of the best highlights of the week. The Cleveland Storm started strong against Manzano and never let their foot off the gas. Cleveland took down the Monarchs 55 to nothing, keeping themselves firmly in the group of teams that look dominant early. In fact, Rio Rancho has a pair of strong football teams this season. Rio Rancho High School posted a shutout of their own. The Rams blanked El Dorado 41 to nothing. Mayfield was without head coach Michael Bradley this week because of COVID, but Mayfield is back in the win column after taking down Oregon Mountain 47 to 10. The Trojans get another crosstown rival this week as they take on Centennial. The Hawks went on the road to face Sandia last week. Centennial never trailed in this one and doubled up the Matadors 42 to 21. Artesia head coach Jeremy Maupin was back in Valencia County as the Bulldogs took on Boleyn. Artesia trailed seven to nothing, but the defense buckled down and held Boleyn scoreless after that. Artesia scored 21 unanswered points to get the victory 21 to seven. Maupin's former team, Los Lunas, continues to win. The Tigers took down West Mesa last week, 41 to 13. Keep your eye on quarterback Paul Searmans, who can find the end zone on the ground or in the air. He rushed for three TDs and threw for another last week. Melrose put up point after point after point after point against Dulce. The Buffaloes put up a big number and shut out the Hawks, 68 to nothing. Santa Fe High School beat St. Michael's 19 to seven. It's the first time the Demons beat the Horsemen since 2008. It's also the first time since 1985, Santa Fe is 3-0 to start the year. Bernalillo High School is perfect three weeks into the season. The Spartans beat Los Alamos 35 to nothing. Bernalillo has outscored their opponents 139 to nothing. Kirtland Central's Zach Thomas gets a couple gold stars this week. Thomas rushed for a school record eight touchdowns in the Broncos 63 to 34 win at Taos. Thomas racked up over 500 all-purpose yards on the day. Hope Christian and Albuquerque Academy played a good one Saturday afternoon. Hope Christian quarterback James Jenkins scored the first touchdown of the morning, going 96 yards for the score. However, Albuquerque Academy quarterback A.J. Rivera threw for over 300 yards, and the Chargers scored 21 first-half points and held on for a 21-20 victory to remain unbeaten on the year. The Valley Vikings won a back and forth battle with St. Pius on Saturday. This one had four lead changes. Ricky Henderson with a couple scores to give Valley their first win of the year, 31 to 28. Down south on Saturday, La Cueva trailed Las Cruces seven to nothing, but scored 28 straight points to beat the Bulldogs 28 to 10. And finally, talk about a fantastic finish. Moriarty and Capital went to overtime the Pintos went up 34 to 27. Capital scored on their OT possession to make it 34-33, but instead of kicking the PAT for the tie, Capital went for the win. Julian Munoz got to the goal line for the overtime victory, 35 to 34. I'm Narissa Valdez from Los Alamos High School, and we'll be back with more game time after this. Do you love sports? Do you want a front row seat for exciting high school sports action in New Mexico? If the answer is yes to either of those questions, then becoming an interscholastic sports official may be right for you. The New Mexico Officials Association is looking for individuals age 15 years or older to serve as officials in 10 different sports. No experience is necessary and training is provided. If you're interested, call 505-923-3110. That's 505-923-3110 or go to the website nmact.org and click on the Officials tab. As you heard earlier, Santa Fe High School picked up a win for the third straight week. It's the first time in 36 years the Demons have started the football season with a 3-0 record. It's been a long time since Santa Fe had a winning record on the year, but things are changing. The Santa Fe High School football program had some down decades. It's been, it's been some rough years, you know. The Demons have only had a winning season twice in the last 34 years, but this program is turning the corner. It, it feels a lot better, you know, the, the culture has changed since we were freshmen, you know, but it feels really good. As long as I've been here, we've been struggling with it. But, I mean, it's gotten so much better, so much better. I mean, we're growing, everyone's growing, everyone's maturing, so I think that comes along with it. Check 30, because it's... Twins with a fullback, right? Yeah. All right. 
it's been hard, you know, because I think when you, you first come in, you don't, you don't have a lot of older classmen that want to come play football because, well, you know, uh, the, the program was, was in a tough position for a long time. So, you know, we, we really have to start with young guys. The Demons are finding out winning is contagious. We ain't losing no more, you know, so that's the goal. You just go out there and win game, be 1-0 every day. We've been more of a we over me type of team this year. It's been more of a family ordeal rather than just teammates. At the end of the day, we feel like family. These are, these are our brothers out here. We talk about winning the day, and, and there's a lot of aspects to that. It's not, just, it's not just a phrase. You know, it's about being positive in the locker room, about keeping all the negative stuff out of the locker room, um, about doing things right in the classroom, out of the classroom. If something's negative happening in your life, going back, reevaluating it, and thinking of the positive stuff. And, and, and really, that, that's what we talk about every single day. Handoff, Mora left side, dives for the end zone, touchdown! Senior running back Martel Mora has established himself as one of the top workhorse running backs in the state. I'm just doing whatever I can. Uh, I mean, I can't do anything without my team, honestly. It probably looks like it's just me, but it's not me. Um, I can't, the blocks are all there, everything's there, the holes are wide open for me. So, I mean, I can't do anything without them. So, I know if I, if I do everything for them, they're going to do everything for me. I can't ask for a better leader than Martel Mora. Um, uh, he's, he's, a good, he's really good with his family, takes care of his, his younger brothers. Um, he's a whole package. The goal isn't just to post a winning record for the first time since 1998. Head coach Andrew Martinez is thinking bigger. We want to win the district championship. You know, we feel we can compete. Um, uh, and, and then get in the playoffs, obviously. I mean, it'll be big for us uh, at the 6A level to be in the playoffs, and, and that's where we want to be. The last time the Demons made the postseason was 2013. Two, one, two. All right, get everything off the, the Demons are also unique this season in that they have a pair of female kickers on the squad. Santa Fe soccer players Molly Wisman and Jazzy Gonzalez moonlight as kickers on the football field. That's going to do it for another episode of Game Time. Be sure to check us out each week. If you'd like to be featured on our show, drop me an email at jp at nmact.org and let me know you'd like to make an appearance on Game Time. Heck, you can drop me an email and just chat if you'd like. We'll see you next week on Game Time.